I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick What's going on, man? We back here with another episode of Between the Lines. And today, I want to talk about something completely different than what I've been talking about for the past few weeks or months. Um, for the past few months, I've been talking about grading every team's offseason. And the feedback I'm getting is pretty good. Like I said, that Knicks video took off a lot. It's still taking off to this day. I think it's at like 600 views as, of, as we speak. But other than that, other than that Knicks video, really... Any other video didn't really do that good. And I kind of want to stay away from that, man. I've been getting a lot of um, inspiration from other creators like Mind of Reese, uh, Pee Wee the Plug, Kenny, King of the Fourth Quarter. And they've been starting like little series lately. And I wanna, I'm want to, i interested in starting my own series. And I, today, I really want to focus in on one underrated player. But further on, I want to just bring a series of just looking at other rate underrated players and just talking about them and really giving my reason why i feel like they're underrated so today we're going to focus on one big name player that doesn't really get talked about enough which is so confusing to me but i understand this some way we're going to talk about brandon ingram man brandon brandon ingram's stint with the lakers i mean his career actually has been really good so far his stint with the lakers was kind of off he started his first year average nine points on 40 percent shooting 29 from three that year was kind of challenging for him because he wasn't really a good shooter at that time. His foot placement when he went to go shoot was just so terrible, and that's something that got didn't get fixed until he went to the Pelicans. But his shooting wasn't really good. Um, as far as finishing around the rim, he wasn't really good at that either. He didn't really know how to use his length, and that's that's a crazy thing to say about somebody who has a 73 wingspan. But he didn't really know how to use his length at that time. So kind of finishing around bigger bigger players was kind of hard for him. But then you bounce back and you come back the next year and he averaged 16 points on 47% shooting, which is really good. 47% is damn near shooting 50%. So that's really good for him. And the future for the Lakers kind of looked really good. Lonzo just came off a decent rookie year. Kyle Kuzma had a really fun rookie year. And then you had Josh Hart, who also had a decent year. The Lakers' future looked really good. And I guess... Other people realize that, and other people like LeBron. The way our, our young core played made LeBron want to come here. And LeBron came here, and if you're a real basketball fan, you can kind of understand that with LeBron being there, the young, the young talent was going to take a step back, and they were going to fall into role players. And that's what happened, bro. Kyle Kuzma was a role player. He was a spot-up three-point shooter. Um, Brandon Ingram literally really only got his buckets when it came to playing with the bench unit. But other than that, when he's playing with LeBron, he's a role player. He's a shooter. Lonzo was a shooter. Full court pa- uh, full court playmaker. But other than that, he's a shooter. And all their roles kind of decreased with Le- LeBron coming in. And that's no, that's no hate to LeBron or nothing. That's just how it is when you play with one of the best players ever. you got to take a step back. But even with all that, Brendan Ingram had a really good year. He averaged 18 points on, what, I, what is it, 46, 46% shooting? I was trying to remember this without looking at my notes. He averaged 18 points on 49% shooting. So you, as you see, his numbers and not just his numbers, his percentages are getting better and better and better. And it was a really decent year for him. And it was a good enough year to where he, he was the main piece in that Anthony Davis trade. They traded him, Lonzo, Josh Hart, and a couple of picks for Anthony Davis. And t- for me, I love the trade for both sides because I knew... Once you let B.I. be free and be the main option, because he has number one option type talent. He's always had it. He just had to give, keep getting better. Once you let him free, he was going to take off, and that's what he did. His next year, his most improved player year, averaged 23 points. Uh, What is it? Damn, I was trying to remember. He averaged 23 points, 4.2 assists on 46% shooting. He had a really, really good year, also while shooting 38 from three. You go from 29 your rookie year to 38 above league average so he just keeps getting better and that's something that you're going to say for him for a long time because every year that's just what happens he just keeps getting better and then this year he had another another roadblock ahead of him zion no offense to zion what i'm about to say the pelicans gave the keys to zion Foley. they went head first into that 
Point Zion, um, that Point Zion play, not playbook, but like scheme. Like Zion was basically the point for this team. Lonzo, uh, he was a spot up shooter. Eric Blosso was just in the corner doing whatever he does, and it was just Zion being a point guard. And I understand why they did that, but I don't think that was the right move. I'm going to talk about that later. But I understand why they did that, and. Even without, even with being the second option, Brandon Ingram averaged 23 points, five assists on 46% shooting, and 38 from the field. I mean, 38 from the three. So as you can keep seeing, his percentages are getting better. Now that did drop down two from his last year, but the percentages are getting better, and that was a, as a number two option. He didn't really have a ball in his hands like that. He was labeled as a second option because they ran into that point Zion mode, and was not wrong with it. But I feel like they chose the wrong player to do that. So one of the main reasons why I feel like Brandon Ingram is completely underrated. When you try to compare him to his peers, and what I mean by his peers, like players that were literally drafted a couple years around him, like Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, Zach Levine, Bam Adebayo. When you try to compare him to those people, and if you say he's better, people will say that's blasphemous. And I don't understand that because... When I look at B.I., I think he has a game that kind of separates himself from those five players. I mean, from those couple players, but the reason why people will say that those players are better than B.I. is because those players have been on bigger stages than B.I. And I can't put that solely on B.I. Jason Tatum was drafted to the Celtics. The Celtics, the year before he was drafted, if I'm not mistaken, they made the conference finals. Jalen Brown, same, same thing. Donovan Mitchell. Yes, he's a huge piece for the Jazz, but when he was drafted, it's not like the Jazz were a bad team. They were actually a really decent team. They were still in the playoffs. Bam Adebayo. I give him a pass because he earned that shit. He took that shit. <laughs> he took that He took that spot from um, Hassan Whiteside. But other players like that, Zach Levine, he's been bouncing around his whole career, so I'm not going to hold that on him. But when you look at B.I., drafted to the Lakers, they were in a full rebuild. Then LeBron came. LeBron got hurt, so... You weren't able to see, you wasn't able to see um, Brandon Ingram on the stage as far as the playoffs. This year and last year, the Pelicans failed to build a real good team around Brandon Ingram and Zion. So, not a lot of names. If you're not really watching Pelican games, you're not really going to know how good Brandon Ingram is. So, I feel like that's kind of a big reason why people don't really look at B.I. as being as good as a player as those other players are. And I understand it, bro, but like, bro, you got to watch it. B.I., to me, his arsenal was better than any player that I named so far. And what I mean by arsenal, his arsenal as far as his scoring. I feel like he's one of the most talented scorers in this game. And it doesn't get talked about enough. When it comes to the mid-range, you have players like KD, CP3, D-Book, Brandon Ingham. I mean, not Brandon Ingham. Bradley Beal, then Brandon Ingham. Those are, to me, the top five mid-range scorers in this game. When it comes to mid-range for Brandon Ingram, it's just secondhand. You can't stop it. The only way you stop it is if he misses. It's no, it's no way of playing good defense when he's in the mid-range because he's going to shoot over you. He's seven, he's 6'11 with a 7'3 wingspan. You're not blocking it. It's completely impossible to block it. You've got to be honest. So when it comes to the mid-range, he just he's unstoppable to guard there. Then when you look at other games, his three-point shot, he's able to be a spot-up if you need him to, which he was a lot this year. He was a spot-up shooter a lot because they gave the keys to Zion and let him be the point. So, B.I. just had to stand on the corner to shoot. He's a decent spot-up. He's also a really good three-point shooter, like I said. He went from 29 to 38. At some point of last year, he was shooting 40% from three. And I want to give that... A lot of credit to that to their assistant coach. What's his name? Fred Vincent. You hear that every time you watch a, a Pelicans game. And they'll be like, Fred Vincent, he spent the summer with Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball, fixed their jump shot. I give him a lot of credit because now after he spent the summer with them, they've been shooting really good. Damn near 40%. He's a better three-point shooter than a lot of, a lot of uh, those guys that I named. When it comes to playmaking, bro, I feel like Brandon Ingram was one of the most underrated playmakers in the league. He can play the point if he needs to. And I think if I'm the Pelicans this year, I'm letting him play the point. When you look at that, the, the players that they have, Devontae Graham, he's a decent playmaker, but he's not really, that's not his game. His game more is shooting, more scoring. That's his game. 
So I wouldn't really let him. He's going to be the point guard because that's just his position. But I wouldn't really give him the full keys as a point guard. Nikhil Alexander, he actually can play the point guard. But they're not going to they're not gonna do that. They need him to score and they need him to shoot. Zion can play the point guard, but he's not a natural born playmaker. Brandon Ingram is a natural born playmaker. He can play the point guard. I wish I had his numbers when he played the point guard for the Lakers because he dominated. But he can play the point guard. He can literally make any pass on the court. Left hand, cross court pass. He can do anything. And that's something that separates from him from guys like um, Jason Tatum, who really doesn't play make like that. Um, Donovan Mitchell, who's really getting good at it, but I don't say he's on the level of Bernie Ingram. Bernie Ingram playmaking is just, to me, it's damn near elite, but it doesn't get talked about because he's the second fiddle to Zion. And there's no offense to Zion. I understand it, but I don't agree with it. I think B.I. should be the playmaker for this team and should be the point guard for this team. Another thing that I can say B.I. has extremely excelled at and got way better at, especially since he's on the Pelicans, he's actually learning how to finish around the rim. That's something that he struggled a lot with on the Lakers, especially when he's with us. Bro, he, he, I don't think he understood that he had a 7-3 wingspan. He would just try to go up on anybody, especially if it's a double team. He would get double because he's a, he's a he's a really good scorer, so he's gonna draw a lot of attention. As soon as he go to the rim, he would get doubled and he would try to go up on two people, and it just would not work. And then this is why I say he's got extremely better on his passing because back in the day when he was on the Lakers, he would really go up on two people. He would he would not see that person in the corner or that person that person up top. He would go up on two people and literally get blocked every single time. It happens so many times. You can look it up on YouTube. But as of right now and today. B.I.'s finishing around the rim has gotten extremely better, and if he needs to pass it, he will pass it. And he sees that pass all the time. But around the rim, I feel like he's got extremely better as far as finishing with both hands, finishing above bigger players. He kills Rudy Gobert every time they play. Dunked on him last year and everything. He kills him every time. And that's damn near the best center. I mean, the best defensive center of all time. He kills him every time they play. That's another thing that I feel like B.I. doesn't get a lot of credit for. His finishing is elite. Finish on both sides of the court, and you really can't stop it, bro. You can go up and under. I can show you up and under highlight. He does everything that, and this, it just doesn't get acknowledged because, again, the Pelicans are not on TV every day, even though they should. They got Zion. That's a big name NBA. They're not on TV. They're not winning games like that. So not nobody's really paying attention to that, and they're not really in the playoffs. They're not on. They're not on big stages, and that's something that. You're not really going to understand how good B.I. is unless he gets to that stage. That's why I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and I'm praying that the Pelicans can do something this year. Even though I think it's going to be hard. Because, yes, they got extremely better. But, like, bro, the West got extremely better. I'm thinking the team that's going to take the huge jump, the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves, bearing no injuries. I pray they don't have no injuries. They are going to take a huge jump. And it's going to be hard for the Pelicans. I'm praying that they can, they can get the champion. I said the championship. But they, they can get to the playoffs because... They have playoff ready players. The thing about Zion is, he 20 years old, averaging 27 points, and I know what the hell he doing. <laughs> he don't know what the, he just doing doing what he does. He don't even know the NBA game yet. And any and any player, any NBA player will tell you that he don't know fully what he doing yet. When Zion, when Zion gets better as far as adding more stuff to his game, being a better playmaker, being a better shooter, he's going to be disgusted. Be all right now. He's ready for the playoffs. His game's already polished up. It's just about averaging more numbers at this point. Once B.I. gets to the point where he's going to play and he's in the playoffs, I promise you, he's going to go crazy. <laughs> I promise you, bro. But just to wrap this video up, man, I just feel like it shouldn't be wrong if I was to say to you right now that Brandon Ingram is either on this the level of these players, um, Zach Levine, Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, or better than those players. Because I, I specifically for me, I think he's better than those players. I'm not even going to lie. Just when you look at his game, bro, his playmaking, better than all of them. He has a more fluid game. Like, when you look at people, um, players like Donovan Mitchell, um, Jason Tatum, they are really good shot makers. But they be taking some dumb shots sometimes. I'm talking about pull-up threes. Them side, them sidestep shots. Yes, Jason Tatum makes them a lot. But sometimes he just be taking them at the top of the shot clock and just be for no reason. Just miss the hell out of them shits. Brandon Ingram, his game is just something that you really can't plan for, bro, because he can hit you from everywhere. He hit you from the mid-range, from three, from the paint, in the post. He can hit you from everywhere. I just feel like he's better than those players because he has a more balanced game. 
And I feel like if you put him as the number two option, it's not going to take away from his game. Like I said, he improved when LeBron came. It just wasn't a great fit. But as far as number-wise and player-wise, he improved. When they made Zion the number one option, he improved. Even though his numbers didn't go up, it's not like they faded back. He has the same damn numbers. So, I just feel like B.I. is more reliable. And to me, he's just a better polished player than those other guys. And that's no hate to them other guys. Them other guys are still top 20, 25 players in the league. But I just feel like B.I., if I was to say B.I. is the top 20, 25 player in the league, people would be like, what the hell are you talking about? I think B.I. is better than Zion, but I didn't want to say that this whole video, but I'm going to say it. He's better than Zion, but he just don't got the name of Zion, and he wasn't the Pelicans' number one pick. So they're not going to give him the keys like they give him um, Zion, which is, hey, cool. But, hey, man, let me know how y'all did this, how y'all like this video. I ain't going to lie. If I if I, I was completely all, all over the place with this video, this is a hard video to do. I'm going to get better at it, but this is a hard. Focusing on one player and then doing it all by yourself. And then you've got mad notes that you don't even remember. I guess I got to remember my notes for next time. But this is a hard video to do. But I got a lot of players that I feel like don't get talked about enough. And I really want to come out with some videos about them. Because it's a lot of underrated players in this league. So, let me know how y'all like this video, man. Subscribe, like. Turn on post notifications. And I will be back either tomorrow or Wednesday.